What is happening, Internet? How's everybody doing? Welcome to a special uh, Injustice versus and uh, Blue Beetle discussion for uh, tonight's stream because One Piece could not be looked at today, which kind of threw everything off uh, because everything was all set to cover One Piece uh, all day today, and um, NDA just doesn't allow that till tomorrow. But anyway, uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff, and uh, your current like goal is 100 likes. And we'll be discussing the uh, Blue Beetle rumors, the Blue Beetle test screenings, uh, the Blue Beetle synopsis. So there will be spoilers uh, if you guys are curious about the Blue Beetle movie that's coming out in August. And uh, it should be fun. So how this is going to work, the Blue Beetle will take on all the Justice League members that were in the Snyderverse. And uh, as well as the upcoming stuff. So like Supergirl can be a playable character against Blue Beetle. Uh, Batman, Superman, Flash... Cyborg was from the previous uh, stuff, and uh, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman, and that's about it. And uh, no, uh, there is no um, evidence of the Snyderverse at all in Blue Beetle anymore, but we'll talk about that at a later time throughout the stream. <sighs> so, Yeah, and um, if you're going to say plot points of the movie, are you going to give like... A like, this is the spoiler part or something. Yeah, and your controller's up there charging. So you gotta... You can get that. And you can fight me with any Justice League member you want. Oh, you're gonna be... I'm gonna be Jaime, yep. Oh, there's my mug! Why in the world is it in the couch? Okay. It wasn't feeling well! Well, that's how spills happen, though. It was empty! I was barely able to sit up! Oh I know. my god! And Amber's sick, just so everybody oh. knows. She's not feeling well, so... Um, she's gonna do the best she can. I'm gonna be angry. Probably. Okay, sorry. Sorry, All right, Honey, grab your controller. I'm or I'll, to. I'll play single player. I am trying to. Okay. Yep! Yeah. Uh, so, uh, anyway, people, the first like goal is 100 likes, and, um, I guess we'll do our poll asking you guys what your, uh, most excited DC film is for the year. Mm. So, let's do that first. All right. What DC mm. film are you most excited for? Mm. You can say hi, honey, or... Hi, everyone. Uh, let's see, Shazam. Mm. Two. Yeah, on um, my... Uh, it's weird, like, I was looking up information about Blue Beetle, and um, like, my ad will hopefully kick in within 20, 30 minutes of the stream. I don't know if it will. I hope to God it will. Um, uh, I was... um. Looking up stuff about the, the Blue Beetle movie, and somebody was like, "Will the Blue Beetle movie be still be happening?" It's like, um, yeah, yeah. Blue Beetle, Blue Beetle, be still happening. happening. It'll be releasing in August. Yep. And the movie also has uh, George Superman. Lopez in it. <laughs> yep. Which uh, George Lopez actually gave us some uh, interesting things that were originally in the movie but are no longer in the movie. Oh wow. Yep. So yeah, we've just been watching. So you're Blue Beetle. My watching, reading some stuff about Blue Beetle, um, what it's they about said to take a hit. Movie, and I, I beefed myself up on watching a few videos about Blue Beetle's origin story. I didn't realize that Ted Cord didn't actually uh, have the Blue Beetle uh, superpowers. No, Ted Cord was just a superhero, um, just like Batman, no powers. But Grant, um, his predecessor, did. Yep. And I feel like in all the origins, like New 52, Rebirth, and all this stuff, like, uh, he, like, Jaime kind of finds the Blue Beetle by accident, like, it attaches to him. I don't even know if it's my favorite. Zelda, you're acting crazy for the normal. Okay, so, yeah, Blue Beetle has had several different origins, but, um, basically Jaime is the guy who gets a hold of the Scarab, if you guys don't know who Jaime Rey is. He is a, uh, Spanish or Mexican-American, and, uh, he 
different versions. Sometimes he runs into a scarab, like, from Ted Kord's laboratory. Sometimes there's an explosion where Ted Kord is killed, and the beetle ends up in Jaime's possession. Other times, he just comes across the scarab. Yeah, the new 52 one was kind of dark. Please, where two, um, thing, two groups of thieves were um, attacking each other for the scarab, and he got in the middle of them. Mm -hmm. It's kind of violent, so I'm kind of, like, glad the... The um, rebirth version of uh, of Blue Beetle happened. It was kind of like a less dark version. Yep. So uh, basically, the Scarab gives you superpowers. If you guys didn't know, it is of alien origin, known as the species the Reach, mm -hmm. and they are basically planet conquering uh, like monsters or creatures. So, the scarab that Jaime is wearing was basically on its way to Earth, separated from its, you know, other Reach buddies, I guess you could say. Yeah. And uh, it ran across a Green Lantern of Sector 2814. They don't really tell you what Green Lantern it is. It varies. It can be Hal, it can be John, could be any of them. Anyway, uh, they have a skirmish with the scarab. The scarab is wounded, ends up on Earth. And then eventually it ends up finding uh, Jaime when it's all weakened and stuff like that. And then yep. Jaime, of course, ends up getting the scarab attached to his spine. And he becomes the Blue Beetle, the superhero. And kind of like a junior hero. Usually he hangs out with like the Teen Titans. Uh, sometimes he's a part of Young Justice. Very rarely is he a member of the Justice League. Because he's just a usually a young kid. He's usually in his like teenage years. In this movie that's coming out in August, Jaime will be around 21, 22 years old. And he is a graduate of the Gotham University. So, um, originally, according to the um, George Lopez character, like the actor, let it slip that Batman was going to cameo in their movie. Now, this was back uh, before Ben Affleck, you know, nobody really knew what role his thing was going to be going forward. And he appeared in cameos for, in rumors, supposedly, uh, Blue Beetle, Aquaman, and of course he had a substantial role, somewhat substantial role, in The Flash. So that's probably what uh, Lopez was talking about. But what they've done now, according to the test screenings that happened, is Batman only has two verbal references. There is no actual interaction with Batman uh, whatsoever or Bruce Wayne. It's just like a, a spoken thing. So basically now, what a lot of people are saying is they could actually probably make it so Blue Beetle reboots the, the whole DC Films thing because it could be the starting point. Because yeah. Aquaman is kind of off in its own little world, but Aquaman's not going to continue anyway. If I was DC, I would move up um, Aquaman and have that movie come out in August. And then I would have yeah. Blue Beetle come out in December. Have it over, like, out with the old... old out with the old, stuff. yep, in with the new stuff. Exactly. Yeah, like, finish off the old universe since you're getting rid of it anyway. But it breaks my heart, but that's a good one. Yep. So, because the, uh, I can never say the actor's name correctly, but, uh, the person playing Blue Beetle is from the, uh, hit, uh, TV series Cobra Kai. Cool. Uh, um, he is the apprentice Superman of, um, wins. oh, gosh, the blonde-haired guy, John something, I can't remember his name. Um, uh, I can't remember his Dan name. Daniel's but... son, and then the blonde kid remember. who was the bully in the original. Um, I don't watch the show enough to really remember. No, but Cobra Kai is, is a cool series. So he's basically, he's worked with uh, Daniel. He's worked with the other guy. Um, Dr. Fang. And uh, he's a very accomplished martial artist, this kid. So he was actually psyched out of his mind to be able to play Blue Beetle, you know? Blue yeah. Beetle. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so basically the there's, um, for action. people that don't know, um, the blue bug is like a parasite. Johnny, okay. Uh, the parasite, the reach, it basically takes over planets. It's like an alien, what, are you gonna um, kill me? life form you that basically they seek and destroy. Good, wasn't on my calendar. Creepily Begin. enough, the blue beetles usually seek out a planet and then, then they like attach to hosts of that planet and then they force the people of that planet to kill their own kind while morphing them into like this weird zombie like um like board type thing where they're part of the blue beetle core and they don't even remember their name. Yeah, the, re the reach. 
yeah, the re- but because the blue- but because the, um, the blue beetle that fell to earth was a little bit different, first of all, it got zapped by a green lantern, so it got kind of damaged. And then it got, like, basically put in a, a temple, like, for a long time, like, either Aztec or Egyptian or something, I think, an Aztec temple. And then, like, uh, basically it was in there for a long time, and then that guy of Grant was studying it a long time ago, and then he ended up becoming the Blue Beetle, and then later on, Ted Four no powers of it. And Jaime, when he finally got it, it was damaged somehow, that's why... It somehow got deactivated, either through magic or damage, so it didn't, like, make him into a zombie. Mm -hmm. That's why he can control it more than he usually, like, he'll usually take control. Yep. So anyway, uh, back to the, the movie stuff. So, the Cobra Kai star, it is said, like, according to some of the test screenings, that there is a lot of hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, because the Cobra Kai star is actually a very accomplished martial artist. There'll be a lot of really cool stunts. Uh, the suit looks really cool, and no people have any issues with that. It is going to be a both, like, um, I would say kind of family-oriented movie. They're going to focus a lot on uh, Jaime's family, and the family will know that he's a superhero, which is different than Spider-Man. Uh, sometimes Mary Jane knows that Peter is Spider-Man, and sometimes the aunt knows. His uncle is definitely going to know because he's going to show up in some of Ted Kord's equipment. Um, not as a, a superhero, but, like, there'll be some uh, comedic aspects of the movie where George Lopez will find some of Ted Kord's stuff and he will assist Jaime. Oh, wow. Yep. And that, That'll be kind of fun. Yep, he's going to bring his own uh, style of comedy, and people have really enjoyed uh, George Lopez. I want to call him Mario Lopez because George Lopez is so old. Like, he's playing uncle. He should be playing grandfather. Like, Mario Lo Lopez would be, like, that uncle age, you know? Like, George Lopez is just ancient. Well, maybe he's an older uncle. Well, usually his uncle is not that old, though. That's the thing. That's that's why I keep, when I, when I hear Lopez, I keep thinking Mario Lopez. Wow, Luke. Because Mario Lopez is at that age of, Sa like, the cool uncle. And savagery George, to George George Lopez. Lopez could be, like, a grandfather at this point. You know, I mean, he so it just my my mind just doesn't uh, a, a, a equate that. So I might actually end up calling George Mario Lopez sometimes talking about the uncle in, uh, in this the um, you know synopsis just because I can't. You know, it's it just too old. Begin. Wow. I'm just saying it, it just that's how it is because uh, in, oh in the gosh. comics his uncle is like you know in his 40s, mid 40s to early 50s, and well George is past that so by a lot. Wow. But, from what I've heard, the test screenings with uh, Lopez were really good. People loved to the uncle, and uh, he brings a lot of energy to it. The last movies that I remember Lopez a part of is um, probably the Chihuahua stuff and some of the Spy Kids movies and some other stuff. I really so. don't call Chihuahua, yeah, Spy Kids. Um, he was in that Jackie Chan movie. He wasn't? Oh, wait, no, that was Spy Kids. That was, that was yeah. I thought he was in a Jackie Chan movie. Though. Yes, he was. He was in a Jackie Chan movie. He played He played the bad guy. He played a corrupt oh, spy, no, I thought. I thought he was the head of the whole department. Yeah, but then he became... I thought he was the bad guy. I don't I remember. It was, he was good. It was like 15 years ago. I guess we'll have to watch it again. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, what they're doing different in the movie, though, from what uh, the test screenings have proven, which they've only had a handful of test screenings because they don't even have, like, a teaser trailer yet. And they don't even know, like, in the continuity where the movie is going to go yet. But the movie is more or less done, and it's in post-production. So people don't have to worry about it not coming yeah, it's out. it's definitely happening. It's definitely happening. So what people are saying about the movie is, number one, it's going to have lots of action. Number two, very still good. Number three, family-oriented. People are saying it's... They're thinking it's gonna be like Spider-Man because it focuses a lot on his home life and and his like family. So you know, his typical friendly neighborhood time in. And I believe I think Susan Sarandon is the villain. She plays like a member of the Cord family who's trying to get the Scarab back. Oh wow. Yeah, but I don't really remember. A, I'm I'm not a huge Blue Beetle person, so either Ted Cord or Jaime, so I don't really know like um why a, a cord would be against blue beetle i do remember in batman brave and the bold 
there was a enemy that Jaime was fighting that was an enemy of um, Ted Cord, who knew him on a, a very personal level. Yeah. And Jaime was and Batman were trying to defeat this guy, but mm. I don't remember if he was related to Ted Cord or not. So it doesn't it, make any sense because Ted Cord is a good guy, so. Why would people of his family be, like, trying to... Well, I mean, he's um, just like how Oliver and Bruce Wayne are basically people that have a lot of uh, wealth and stuff like that. Ted Cord and his family also uh, got a lot of wealth through, I believe, tech. Like, Ted Cord was an inventor. I don't so. know who to fight you Supergirl's as fine. Supergirl. I guess I could fight you as the Flash. Supergirl. I'm trying to figure out people that would know Blue Beetle. Well, and then I watched some clips of Blue Beetle and Young Justice. Approaching he, cool he, he played a big role in the uh, Young Justice show. So, uh, since Supergirl's in the mix, we're going to talk about Supergirl. So basically, uh, Supergirl is referenced in the movie uh, at least twice, according to the test screenings that I've heard back from. And uh, I believe it is the Sasha Kaye or Kali or whatever her name is, like a version of Supergirl. Mm -hmm. She's not shown in the movie. But the movie does take place post-Flash in some capacity. Because yeah. there is no Supergirl until after the Flash. Which, yeah. Um, in reality, they should probably just move the Flash until August. And then have Aquaman come out um, in June. Because having... Uh, the continuity is so messed up. It, it just... If they're talking about Supergirl post you know, Flash movie. And she makes her appearance in the Flash movie, and she's a part of the, whatever, the rebooted universe, or the soft reboot. Um, and apparently Blue Beetle, it's not that he has a crush on her, but there's either mentioning of her, like, in a, a poster in his room, or something, so she's been around for a while. And uh, what's interesting about the whole Supergirl thing is they actually have a reference to Superman in the movie as well. Now, it's not the Henry Cavill version of Superman anymore, obviously, but a Superman, a, you know, version of Clark Kent exists in Blue Beetle's new universe, which is kind of exciting. But again, we don't know who that is going to be because uh, James Gunn still hasn't announced his plan that he's supposed to be doing uh, at the beginning of January. And it's already, like, almost the middle of January with still no formal announcement, like, what's happening. Yeah. Ouch! Never's being all ferocious. Okay. Just do your best. Be fine. Alright, so... If, if I have to leave for a second, guys, I'm um, going to move us to play one player for a minute. I might have to leave. Yeah, Amber's very sick. I don't She's feel going to the doctor so tomorrow. Sorry. Still trying to tickle I don't me? feel well. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like... She's very sick like, and she's like going the videos, to the doctor. So we don't have to do this very long. Yeah, a two-hour stream would be very hard for Amber to do. Uh, so, I'm um, sorry, like... Honey. Nope, liking and sharing the video would be really good. Okay, so let's see. What else is going on in the movie? Um, I don't know. I haven't heard back from uh, a clear description from people who have seen the test screenings. Uh, the first round of test screenings for Blue Beetle, which happened at the end of December, I believe. Yeah. Um, so it was about, like, two and a half, three weeks ago. Something like that. I'll be right back. Oh, okay, this is not it. I, I need your controller. Well, I know. I, I'm sorry, I thought you said I could go already. Yeah, you could go, but you need to hand me your controller before you leave. Okay, so I'll do uh, some single player, and then I'll try to uh, figure out some stuff. Okay, so Amber will be back off and on. Blue right, Beetle. So let's do. Uh, wait. How in the world do I do this? Do I have to do story? Single fight? How do I play the computer? Blue Beetle. Okay, there we go. Alright, alright, that's fine. Uh, let's bring in. Um, Let's let's do some Batman discussion. So we'll bring Batman in, have the computer play Batman. as him. Amber kind of, uh, she'll be back off and on. She's going to the doctor tomorrow because um, she needs to go. Um, let's see, where is uh, okay? Having ADD moment. I guess we're fighting Bruce. Fighters one. approaching the Batcave. All righty. Um, thank you guys for the super chat. Appreciate that. We're gonna talk about. You've been practicing, Jaime? Yeah. Thanks for asking. 
find it. Prove it to me. Begin. Okay. Alrighty. So Bruce is going to be fighting us. So let's talk about uh, what Ben Affleck's original involvement was. Um, this is a spoiler, sort of. So as you guys know, um, Ben Affleck was supposed to appear in various cameos for DC Films after uh, Zazlap and company basically were um, trying to get him to, to stick around originally before uh, salary discussions happened in November, which fell through, or Christmas or whatever. And um, apparently he showed up either as Bruce Wayne or Batman in Jaime's uh, movie. Of course, that stuff has all been cut out now because it did not appear in the first test screenings that happened at the end of December or the beginning of January. I forget. Um, in the movie, Jaime is more or less a former student of the Gotham University, like Cyborg. We don't know what Victor's role is going to be. I don't believe even Victor is mentioned, but the Gotham University shirt that people have been freaking out about who've seen the movie, or at least the test screening, said that it looks similar to Cyborg's um, sweatshirt that had the Gotham uh, University, like, um, you know, logo and all this other stuff. So it's it's comparable to that. And it, it could just be an Easter egg to, you know, what came before it, or it could be something completely different. Ah, the computer smoked me. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, it's possible that the Batman role in the movie, though very brief, was probably to just recruit, um, you know, Jaime to the new Justice League. And if Michael Keaton sticks around, which I don't think he will after The Flash, they could always insert that. But I have a feeling that Batman is just going to have, like, a, a name drop, just like he did in uh, Shazam and um, some other stuff. Well, there we go. It wouldn't really make sense to to have like Ben stick around because we don't even know what the the new ending of the Flash is going to be. The original ending of the Flash had showed that Ben Affleck was lost in time, and Superman was also inside of the Speed Force that Barry ends up finding at the end of the movie. But of course, you know Henry Cavill's role in uh, the Flash has been completely removed because you can't really have him stick around because they're going to have an all-new Superman actor, which we still don't know who that's going to be, which is kind of a bummer, but oh well. A lot of people ask me if I'm really on board with the whole um, thing that James Gunn and company want to do. I, I don't really know, because I, I don't know what they're planning on doing at the moment. It just... It is what it is, you know? Um, I would have preferred the old ways of doing stuff, personally. Oh, you guys made it to the first light goal. Your next light goal is uh, 125. Gives you guys something to do while I uh, talk shop about the Dark Knight and stuff like that. Also, I'm not a very good blue uh, beetle player. So, uh, the stream was originally going to be, like, uh, Amber and I just kind of hanging out, but she's very sick. Okay. No, I'm not, Amber. I'm concentrating. Okay, honey, I you can talk to me when you're down here. All right, so anywhere, where was I? I was talking about uh, the Batman role. So, um, it's not very clear to me from descriptions I've had at the test screenings if Blue Beetle takes place in Gotham City or if he's just a graduate of uh, Gotham University. I like to think that he's just a graduate and maybe his movie takes place in either uh, Bloodhaven or like a city that's near um, Gotham because Gotham City in a sense doesn't play that big of a role. It was just kind of like a, a brief mention of Batman, not his secret identity. Oh wow. And uh, some other stuff. So essentially that's all we know about Batman and that's probably all the stuff about Batman you're going to know. Um, and that's that's fine. The Superman stuff, very, very brief. They don't really um, do stuff other than acknowledging that Superman exists in the uh, Blue Beetle like uh, thing. So Blue Beetle. Bizarro. I couldn't even beat him on. Really? I'm going to try normal again. Try Superman. 
and by Superman Tri Bizarro. Fighters approaching Fortress of Solitude. <clears throat> Hello, Zelda. Mm. All right, here we go. Wow. Okay, so begin. about Superman. Superman is just mentioned by name, like once or I believe just once from what I've heard. Honey, I, I can't stop. I'm, I'm talking. I'll lose my train of thought. Okay. So, Superman is mentioned by either Jaime or his uncle. Like, uh, Lopez actually says a lot of funny stuff in the movie. And uh, kind of is like the, um, I wouldn't say the center, but there's stuff involved with, uh, I almost called him Mario Lopez again. George Lopez's stuff, where they're acknowledging that these other heroes exist in the universe. And uh, Superman just gets like a, a brief mention. I believe before Supergirl does, but again, like, um, once they actually edit the full movie together, like, the director's cut is just kind of like, uh, a connection of all the different scenes that they want to use and stuff like that. Sometimes it doesn't exactly end up as the, the theatrical cut. Like, different things can happen and be moved around still, so, um, you know, but for the most part, it sounds like the movie takes place uh, after the Flash, because Supergirl has at least two nods in the movie. And we don't know if it's going to be posters or whatever, because they're still, you know, filling in things. Uh, a lot of the CGI and stuff is not really finished when you go to test screenings. I've never been to one, but I've heard from uh, friends who've attended ones in California and stuff like that, that the CGI is, like, very bare bones, and uh, sometimes there's, like, music and sometimes there's not. Uh, it's just kind of like oh, to give, wow. yeah, give people a taste of what the movie could be, and you know. Well, so the screening wasn't the entire. It wasn't the whole movie. Well, I mean, it's it's like uh, depends on the test screening. Sometimes it's test screenings. Path? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. kind of. It's like the beginning of the editing process. I'm sorry that I left. I'm it's okay. I'm ready to do it. All right. Bizarro's destroying me. Wow. Okay. So we'll go back to... My, my controller somewhere. Yep, I have your controller over here. There you go. Okay, so I talked about the Batman stuff. I uh, talked about Superman. And we'll go into... Uh, back into Versus. So I'll stick with... You can play as Jaime if you want. Or... No, I, I just Blue Beetle. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was Superman. Uh, we'll talk about the Flash, 27, 24, 20, just 23 minutes, 50, Superman talk. Um, so this will be... Green Lantern. Green Lantern? <laughs> well, since Green Lantern was probably the one that hit the uh, beetle down to Earth... As far as I know, there's no mention of Green Lantern in the movie, though. But it would have made sense if they did that. But they're not doing the um, the new 52 stuff. Well, you can tell me. Fighters you approaching me Gotham City. Oh, that's fine. And I I'm, love seeing John Stewart, so it works out. I'm fine with playing as whoever you want. I don't know what you're talk about. Walk okay. away, Beetle. Why would I do that? Better than lip. Begin. All right. 125 likes is your guys' next goal. So, what I would have loved to see, or, or hear about, since, uh, again, the Scarab plays a, a big role with the Green Lantern, and they're trying to actually add the Green Lantern to, uh, the new wave of, like, you know, DC Studios next ten years or whatever. It would have been cool if they gave, like, some type of Easter egg for the Green Lantern, but the only superhero Easter egg so far... Again, the movie comes out in August, so there's still maybe some stuff they can do, I guess, if they have to do reshoots. But um, Superman, Supergirl, Flash has several little nods and like one or two Batman references and that's it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so basically they're, they're kind of doing the Shazam thing. Like Shazam 1, um, remember he mentions Batman when he's in the, the mall at Christmas time and he tosses the uh, Batman figure or like doll at, um, I can't even remember the, the villain from that movie. It's kind of forgettable. But they're fighting in the uh, mall, and Shazam's being chased by that guy with the monocle. And he throws uh, Batman at him, and he's like, get him, Batman. So he was... And uh, also the uh, the hand, uh, handicapped boy. 
Um, the one on crutches has an extensive collection of DC memorabilia yeah. and talks about like Wonder Woman and Superman and Batman and Aquaman and stuff in, in the movie briefly just to try to like, you know, tie Shazam to the grander uh, DC universe at the time. And that's kind of what Blue Beetle is supposed to be. It's, it's like a bookend movie. Um, originally, I believe there was some mention of Batgirl that they did take out. Um, it did not appear in the test screenings, but it was rumored that both Batgirl and Supergirl would have more mentions because they were the characters that were going to appear um, after post-Flash. Yeah. But of course, Batgirl got canceled, so... Yeah, we can't... they were going to focus yeah. on... At one point, they were going to focus on a lot of women. Mm-hmm. But there's no gal mention, uh, as far as I know. You keep dodging me, it's making me so frustrated. I keep coming towards you, just like walk away. I'm sorry, I don't, don't want to get it. I understand, like, your entire, your entire strategy is just running away. Because I can't play I'm, as this character. I'm distracting you. You're, like, just running away from me this whole time. I'm good at dodging. That's not fighting, then. How are you going to fight crime? If it's all dance, it's is dance fighting. Dodging? Dance fighting. How are you supposed to fight crime if you're just dodging out of the way all the time? I'm, I'm a... supposed to be the hero. You can't even do one punch. You're just dodging around. I, I know Jon Stewart will destroy me, so I'm scared. Also, dodging is a way of fighting well, games. There we go, guys and gals. That's what the Blue Beetle movie is apparently going to be about. A coward. Ooh! I don't understand why you keep dodging me. I don't know, I'm playing a fighting game with you, and also I was just playing the computer, and the computer was destroying me, so I'm still in that oh. mindset of fighting the computer. And the computer was actually destroying me, even though I was dodging attacks. Where was I? Uh, about... I don't know, you were distracting me, you just kept dodging. Okay. You said the, that that girl was going to be in the, uh, originally going to be in the she was going to be mentioned. mentioned. Not appear. That's, that's false information. Luke, I don't know. I'm not giving false information. I have no idea. If you would have told me we would be talking about Batgirl, then I would have I would have loved that. I had no idea what we would be talking about today. It's called a discussion. It's not <laughs> that a, you're it's prepared not a for and I'm not. I know you're cranky because you don't feel well, but just... I'm not cranky. I'm not cranky at all. I have all no right, idea what's happening. Begin. Okay, so... It would have been better if we had this discussion tomorrow when I'm not in severe pain. Tomorrow is all one piece. This is the only day. I know, but it, I just... I'm sorry. I thought it, I would have helped the video to leave so you could do it on your own, and you would have had a better discussion without me because I don't feel well. But then you were like, oh, Amber said it would be better if she was here, so then I came back downstairs. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of confused, but I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, confused. I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, so I was talking about, uh, I was talking about Batgirl, how she was originally supposed to get a mention because of the new post-Flash stuff. Uh, the world, at least the, the new DC world, has been significantly changed after the Flash. Uh, I don't know what that means. I guess that's like a, a huge spoiler or something for people who saw the test screening. Like, it feels like a completely different world in, in the Blue Beetle movie. Like, it, it's it's a superhero movie, but it doesn't have that same feeling as, like, the Snyderverse or the DC films or Black Adam had previously. It's got its own signature feel to it that kind of feels like something new and different, which is exactly kind of what DC needs. The problem is DC needs to figure out what they're going to do you know, with the placement of this movie. Like, is it part of the old universe? Is it part of the new universe? They haven't really committed to anything yet. And James Gunn, other than saying that the movie is coming out, hasn't really talked about where Blue Beetle fits into this new plan. So some people are kind of speculating that maybe Blue Beetle is part of the old universe, and then once uh, James Gunn and company starts working on the next wave, then it'll just be like a soft reboot, and all these other movies that are coming out don't even matter at this point. Like, they're just kind of releasing for the sake of being kind of almost like multiverses or else, um, Elseworld stories or something like one-offs, like The Joker or Matt Reeves' uh, standalone universe, things like that. Yeah, I, the chat is completely frozen for me. I haven't seen the chat in 40 minutes. Yeah, the chat's moving. Well, I am on my phone. I see the same chat as it was 20 minutes ago. That's weird. I see the same comment from 20 minutes ago just sitting there for 20 minutes. Try refreshing your phone. 
like I'm, I don't really need to look at the chat right now because I'm not doing any Q&A stuff. I'm just talking about uh, stuff that I know and going over it and all that other stuff. Okay. Yep, you guys are almost at 100 and uh, you're close to 120 likes. All right, let's continue with the Green Lantern thing. What I think, personally, uh, what would be interesting that I don't know if they could do right now is I would try to squeeze in a Green Lantern cameo. Especially if they're doing the whole thing where the Scarab is a member of the Reach. Uh, some mention of, like, Green Lantern would be cool, especially if, like, the Scarab is um, telling how he came to Earth and they show, like, it traveling in space. And then you don't even have, an, have to have an actor. Like, you could just have, like, a, a CGI Green Lantern out in space blasting the Scarab and the Scarab crash lands on Earth. And just right there, when audiences went to the movie theater, they got to see a Green Lantern. And, you know, you know that this is going to be different than the other DC universes because a GL is going to pop up. Like, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, because they didn't have a Green Lantern in the side of the Except for the... Or they did have a Green Lantern flying around, but you didn't know who Yeah, they had a Green Lantern who fought Darkseid in, in the past thousands of years ago and died, and his ring went back to Oa. But yeah. it wasn't a Green Lantern of significance. It was just some GL. We don't know yeah, who he was. He's alien. Random people. We got Martian Manhunter. We got Cyborg. We got... Which isn't random, but we, we just got no Green Lantern. Nope. A lot of interesting people added in. Green Lantern was supposed to show up in Justice League 2. Um, according to, like, the, the storyboard drafts and the plan that Snyder had for his second Justice League movie. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm excited for Blue Beetle. I'm not really, um... I'm not really, uh, like, I'm not really planning on anything. Like, I'm not, uh, getting my hopes up for anything. As far as I know, it'll just be one movie, and then they'll never have a DC Universe movie again. I mean, I don't know what they're doing. I have no clue. They just keep rebooting it. Every movie that they do, they reboot it again. It's like, every movie is its own universe. I have no idea what they're doing. They're just crazy, so this just... I have no... It would be great if it started being a new universe, but I'm not getting my hopes up. Well, Blue Beetle was made... The thing is, what's weird about the Blue Beetle movie, it was actually made during the regime of uh, Walter Hamada, so it was going to follow the post-Flash universe and kind of be a part of that whole reboot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the new Justice League would have been Shazam, Blue Beetle, Flash, Supergirl, Batgirl, Black Canary, and... Aquaman. So he was Wonder doing Woman. it as part of a new universe anyway. Yeah, and Walter Hamada's Endgame was basically the whole um, Crisis on Infinite Earths or Final Crisis movie where Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill were going to come back um, yeah. and some other DC stars to kind of like bookend and then completely reboot the DC universe again uh, five, six years from now. Yeah. And, of course, James Gunn has a completely different idea of what right. he wants so to do. Right, so it was made under Walter Hamada, and now James Gunn is in charge. Which is weird, because you would think that all the Walter Hamada movies that were in development would get, like, either completely overhauled or they'd get scratched. Basically, all I know is that Blue Beetle is probably, Beetle. from what all the test screenings, from what people say, <sighs> that literally nobody is boycotting it, nobody is... Ship. It, it doesn't have any, it doesn't seem to have any, like, it doesn't seem to be ostracizing anyone, or it doesn't seem to be, like, super, like, one way or That's the other political or anything. It's just a that nice superhero quickly. movie, like Spider-Man. So hopefully it won't alienate anyone, it won't have a huge heat or anything base, so hopefully it will, you know, and it seems like it's going to be a decent film, so hopefully it'll be the one DC movie that we know is going to get made. <laughs> no, it's 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 uh, definitely coming out. Like um, Zaslav's not canceling any more movies because, like, he can't afford the, um, you know, the the vacuum of no money. Yeah. He did that in 2022. He's not doing that again. He canceled a lot. Yeah. I mean, like, it makes Still sense. canceling things. Like HBO Max has been completely gutted. He got rid of just about all the Looney Tunes stuff. Yeah. He's moving all the DC shows back to like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon yeah. Prime. And it makes, I mean, it makes sense that like, and that's really why we even 
chose Boobie Doe as a topic is because it's the one thing that's positive in the DC universe right now. Everything else is negative. All the comics are in, you know, down the, uh, the blender. Like, the, the, all, everything is, is terrible in DC. There's one good ray of hope, and that's Blue Beetle. I think, like, people saying that Blue Beetle is gonna be, like, Spider-Man, I think it's kind of weird because... Spider-Man, he has spider powers, but Blue Beetle is a different character than Spider-Man. Blue Beetle is literally a beetle that attaches to him, and in some comics, he doesn't even want the beetle. And it, you know, it kind of like hurts when the beetle attaches to him, and he can't even get it off of him. Like, it's a completely different character than Spider-Man. Yeah, let's, so, uh, let's talk about the family mechanics. So what's different than uh, Tom Holland and Jaime Reyes? Uh, versions of the characters like Tom Holland eventually his aunt you know learned who he was and his best friend knew throughout all three movies that he was Spider-Man his girlfriend eventually learned that he's Spider-Man in the second movie and that was about it you know a couple Avengers um, Jaime uh, basically his family either right after he gets the scarab or around the same time they don't say when in the movie but the family is going to know that Jaime is the Blue Beetle in the first movie. Mm -hmm. Not at the end of the movie, during the movie, and they are going to play a role with him defeating the villain. That's really kind of cool. It is cool because it's going to be like, you, you, know, you know how like Mexican families, they have like really big dinners and um, they're a very like a tight group of like family bond. Yes. That is going to play a huge role into how blue beetle operates as a superhero it's, it's a very me me familia i think yeah me familia. Yeah, yeah yeah that's my family yeah Scarab that's my family so um I'm, i was called him mario lopez again dang it george, george Lo lopez i know george. i know george george and mario are very close in, in my head so, I'm, I'm sorry i've been in a lot of pain i know that's why you're going to the doctor tomorrow yes you do Yes, you do, because it's going to impact uh, all your stuff this week, and we've got new releases, and also you can't be uh, handling it how you are because it's not healthy for you. Oh. you got to get that um, antibiotics for whatever is going on, which I'm, I'm not going to bring light to because, yeah, Amber's just really sick, and I'm forcing her to go to the doctor because I'm a mean husband. Uh, I would go with her, but they have COPPA rules, or not COPPA, dang it. They have COVID rules where um, people are not allowed to wait in the waiting room uh, where we live. So if I go in, I'm not allowed to actually go in the doctor with her. So. I don't even know if you're going to be allowed to go in the building. Probably not even allowed in the building, yeah. So, But anyway, yeah, Mia Familia is going to be the big difference between Spider-Man because, yes, the ant does learn and tries to make money off of it, if I remember correctly. She becomes uh, Peter oh, wow. Parker's agent and the Spider-Man, um, you know, Avengers thing. Uh, she's, like, hanging out with him and they're touring and doing all this other stuff because Spider-Man is, like, this big celebrity after the death of Iron Man. That's not going to be what Blue Beetle is about. Blue Beetle is, at its core, it's a family film. This is a film that... We'll probably get a PG-13 rating, but it'll be, like, mild PG-13. It's not going to be super intense. You're not going to see the death of Ted Kord. Ted Kord is going to die off screen. There's no actor yeah. that's playing Ted Kord. Oh, wow. Ted Kord's suit, which is comic accurate, will show up in the movie. Oh, Ted wow. Kord's flying beetle spaceship Whoa. thing will be in the movie. How will they explain how he got... The Beetle without Ted Cord there. Uh, same way they did it in the New 52. They didn't mention Ted. Uh, Ted Cord Industries blows up and the Beetle pops out, and oh. then you learn that you know Ted Cord was a superhero, and they can probably just have newspaper clippings. You don't actually have to hire a Ted Cord actor, like uh, so bad, because I mean, as much as Ted Cord is an interesting character, and he played a big role in Crisis uh, Identity Crisis and some other stuff. Um, Maxwell Lord storylines for DC. A lot of the most popular stories that Ted Cord has been in involve him dying. I'm sorry, he's just kind of your average. But I saw a cool Blue Beetle comic where he, where I think it was the rebirth where he, where Jaime and Ted Cord had like a beetle like like headquarters that was like mobile like they could fly in it that's dc rebirth and it was like a beetle 
buggy or whatever. Yeah, I, I never understood. Uh-huh. In in DC Rebirth, they had this idea that they were going to make um, Jaime and Ted Cord kind of like Batman and Robin. You had the yeah. more experienced Ted Cord character, and then you would ha- had Jaime who had the superpowers and... You know, Ted would kind of follow him around with his gadgets and stuff. Like, it, it was a cute concept. It was. But it it was very different than the the origin that they established, you know, with the death of Ted Cord, with Jaime becoming uh, the superhero and living on that legacy of Blue Beetles and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it was fun, but it just, I don't know. The, some, some aspects of DC Rebirth was kind of a misfire. And some of it was good, but the Blue Beetle stuff to me was kind of mixed. Flash? Relax, I'm on your side. You've been on both sides. Begin. All right, so Flash stuff. Uh, what do we know about the the Flash? The movie's coming out. Uh, there's a big Super Bowl trailer that we're going to get more details on Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck's role. It's going to be a very Batman-centered and Supergirl-centered trailer. Um <laughs> During the Super Bowl, I believe it's a almost a four minute trailer, three minutes and fifty seconds, I think, something like that. Pretty lengthy trailer. Um, and then Blue Beetle has multiple nods to the Flash. Like I don't know if they know each other, but the the Ramez, Ray, Ramez, Ramey, Ramey family yeah. know of the existence of these superheroes, and I think it's during a, a dinner conversation that they talk about the Flash. Or at least the uncle does. Oh, wow. I think uh, George Lopez's character, the uncle, is, is, I wouldn't say obsessed with superheroes, but um, really likes them. Interested. In them. Interested, oh, yeah. Because he actually, in the That's movie, he flies Ted Kord some flying spaceship. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. And he, you know, he really gets yeah. into it. Well, my... I mean, just what you were saying, that to me, like, I don't know, what you were talking about Mexican and Hispanic families being really together. I remember, like, when my neighbor had her quinceanera and I went there with her, there was, like, 300 people for when she turned 15, and all of them were, like, family in some way. Mm-hmm. And, like, they had a huge smorgasbord of food, and they were all dancing, and it was, like, hours, like, into the night till, like, 3 a.m., and I was, like... Oh, wow. They were, like, oh, yeah, this is a family gathering, and I was just thinking, like, okay. Uh, but, like, that was kind of reminds me of um, that movie with, uh... You know, like a fool's rush in where she's like, Oh, yeah, meet my family. It's just a regular Sunday, and there's like 50 people there, and they're having like a barbecue and stuff. Yeah, (laughs) it was like, Okay, so that just shows like that for us, like, um, you know, just like in America, like we're not used to that kind of like family togetherness that they have in Hispanic families. Yes, the the family plays a big role in Blue Beetle, which is going to be, um, I guess a way for the audiences to connect with this younger hero. Like, a lot of DC heroes, they're very strained with their family relationships. Yeah, so it's like, it makes you feel good that he's he's really has a close connection with his family. Also, it's kind of neat to put, like, his culture into it, too. Yep. Like, it's not just his ethnicity, but also his culture and all the things that go with it. Yep, like Jaime's house looks like your, you know, typical, like, California Hispanic house. Like, you know, um, dinner time is very important. Uh, I don't remember how big the family unit is for Jaime in the movie. All I've heard so far is that the uncle plays a huge role in it, which is great. Um, And George Lopez is really good in the test screenings. Yeah. But the problem that I have with test screenings with DC films is we've had so many movies... Where they said the test screenings were bad, or sorry, the test screenings were great, and the movie was bad. When you have a test screening, you want it to have kind of an average outlook, because that's what Wonder Woman was. And the test screenings, I believe, originally for Man of Steel and BVS were kind of average, and those movies were really well done. Whereas the Justice League test screening was very positive with audience oh reactions, gosh. but then the movie released, and it wasn't that good. Yeah, that's same, weird. Same thing with, um, what was it, Black Adam. People praised the test screenings for Black Adam yeah, and Batgirl, right. and those movies were just mediocre to the point where uh, Batgirl was basically canceled for how bland it was. Yeah, and I mean, although I really liked um, the, you know, the Rocks movie, I did see some other movies like this here that were really good, like the Sonic movie and... 
Puss in Boots. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I liked those movies a lot. It was hard to compete with Puss in Boots. So personally for me, when companies say, oh yeah, you know, we had a great test screening. It's like, I don't really care about your test screenings because I want to know how this is going to equate to the actual theater. Because test screenings, you know, they can be a mixed bag. They can be terrible, they can be great, you're still going to try to release the movie and you've got yeah. time to fix it. What's hard is like you can't really even trust like um, journalists at all because they first. also do like corrupt and they just like, they just basically write about politics, they don't even care. Like you can't trust them, like if the plot is good or bad, they'll never tell you. They only tell you if the plot is good or if, it, if the movie agrees with their viewpoints on things. So like you can't even you can't even tell like if the movie is really bad don't you know but it agreed with them then I don't know I don't know what to say but you just there's no the journalists aren't even they don't even tell you the truth anymore it's all like it's all like how much money they get paid to say certain things so you have no idea if the movie's really good or not there is one thing I'm really ecstatic about the villain I believe the villain is Susan Sarandon and she's playing a chord and she's after the scarab so a lot of the action sequences are people trying to get the scarab away from Jaime and also it is an origin movie so yeah. it, it's gonna be a, a fun upbeat origin movie it's not gonna be too intense this will be a movie that you can take your kids to you know if, if there are you know parents who still watch this channel yeah. um, it I would say it, it's it's more of a a family fun superhero movie than Shazam or Black Adam. Well, that's going to be interesting. Black Adam was super dark. If, if Ted Kord's, uh family member wants to take the Beetle, because Beetle in reality it would have belonged to Ted Kord. So if it attached to Jaime, I guess he would be kind of taking it from the Ted Kord family. I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. Like, well, maybe the reason why she's trying to take the scarab is because she needs it for financial reasons for the, you know, court industries or something. I, I don't really know. Yeah. I'm not familiar with her well, character. Maybe she'll use jitters. it for a bad reason. All right, yeah. man. Your funeral it could be. I did kind of want it. Like, I was just talking the other day about how I really hope there would be a really good female villain who would be super evil. So I hope if... If yeah, she is. A, she's definitely the antagonist of the so movie. So I hope she become. I think that's kind of cool. Too. I don't know if she's like super evil or she's just like business evil, but she's definitely yeah. the the main Lord villain. Lord business. <laughs> now, what I I've asked people is like, well, what is the movie set up like? What's the sequel? And the first test screenings are kind of like, well, I, I don't know if it really sets up a sequel. Like, you know that you know that that uh, Scarab is of alien descent, but. Um, I don't know if they ever actually mentioned as part of the reach. Like, you know it's like this alien, and it could, you know, open the door to other alien-related stuff. Yeah. But I don't know if they actually say the reach or not. Like, the, I've heard back from three different people that have seen the test screening. Oh, and I don't know And usually, about it. usually when people get back to you and they recount the test screening, um, it varies based on, you know, who saw it and who remembers what. Because... People aren't really going and jotting down like complete like outlines and things like that. Yeah. The, the big parts of the movie stick out to them. The little nods, little Easter eggs to other superheroes, things like that. But like a, a, a coherent plot from point A to B, you know, all the way through is, is not something that usually comes Whoa. out of these test screenings. Yeah, I don't know anything about it, so you know a lot more than me. For me, it's told you I, was I don't fast. know. It's really hard to tell what the movie's gonna be about because it's really, which means don't know what it is. which means like during the test screenings the um, studio can actually go through and they can change the order of when the scenes play so you can go to the move or the test screening and see it one way and then six months from now or three months from now you might get lucky again to see the test screening yeah. and it's almost like a completely different movie because of how it's been edited i can't believe that we never get to go to a test screening. Uh, oh, wow. we're not in california they don't tend to have people from boston or new york city or mm. well no actually people from new york city do get invited but people from Boston, Pennsylvania, Chicago, not usually. People in California, New York City, uh, things like that will we'll get invites. Oh, I don't care. I, I don't really feel comfortable in theaters right now anyway. And especially like crowded gatherings in general with the T virus and everything. I just I don't I don't feel normal right now with all that stuff.
thumbnail looks amazing and thank you for doing this. Well, you're the one who came up with the stream idea tonight. I, I was kind of trying to figure out what we were going to do. I think my ad bulls kicked in. James Gunn should cameo as the uh, anti-monitor, uh, I guess. And uh, just just so we're clear, people, I don't know how to play as Blue Beetle. I hardly ever use Blue Beetle. I can Blue play Beetle. as him if you want. I mean, it feels like sure. you don't want to play as him, so I don't know. Sure, I can do that. Uh, I'll bring I'll bring Aquaman into the equation, so we can kind of talk about. I'm I, I mean, there's no Aquaman uh, Easter egg that I know of. No. Uh, Superman, Supergirl, Batman, Flash. That's that's about it. There's no even Wonder Woman reference. But they could always mm -hmm. throw together if the uncle really is this this superhero fanboy or like not obsessed with superheroes, but he you know he's, yeah. he's very um, interested in them. Then it would make sense in the uncle's house if he had like a Wonder Woman maybe poster he, or a mug or something. Maybe it's like he liked superheroes when he was a little kid or something. No, superheroes didn't exist when he was a little kid. Nope, because mm -hmm. that would have made well. Batman would have been around when he was a little kid, because Batman yeah. was active for mm -hmm. twenty years. But now it's not the Ben Affleck Batman, so yeah. you'd have to if if they had a thing where he's talking about how he's known Batman since he was a kid or a teenager, then it would have been talking about the Ben Affleck Batman. But now we don't know what yeah. type of Batman they're going to be references in the Blue Beetle movie. Who does Blue Beetle usually fight in the comics? Uh, he usually fights aliens, he fights, like, other rogues, sometimes he fights Batman villains, sometimes he fights Superman people, sometimes he fights Green Lantern villains, it all depends, like, uh, he yeah. also has his own kind of, um, bad guys too, but, again, yeah. I'm not a big Jaime fan, like, I never really liked the, the suit design with, like, the, the mask, like, um, Jaime's, um, look in the comics like his mouth is visible like through his, yeah, his suit thing i, I, like I prefer better. i prefer where the there's like um just like i don't like when you give optimus prime like lips i like when yeah. he just has a shield on his face so i like when um jaime's blue beetle design just has like the the mask with no mm. opening to his mouth i don't i don't like that yeah well, so I even though I think Jaime's a cool character, he just didn't really mm. appeal to me all that much. Aquaman. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no problem. Right. Fighters approaching Metropolis. But I liked um, Jaime's role, especially hanging out with Bart um, in uh, the Young Justice show. Shall we do, your oh. highness? You're fine. You do not mock me with formality. Informal mocking it is. No, you can't. Begin. But going to the doctor tomorrow will help out a lot. Or the minute clinic or whatever it's called. Aquaman. And then you'll feel right as rain when the medicines start working. Because there's only certain things that can be treated with uh you know antibiotics and just over the counter stuff. It's all about feeling better. But um uh, let's see. If I was working at DC, mm, DC Films with um, James Gunn and company, I I would want, based on the tone of the movie, from what we heard about Blue Beetle, and the fun aspect and the um, energetic thing and the the different look to possibly Gotham City or um, different parts of the DC universe, it would make the most logical sense have Blue Beetle be the movie that resets the timeline. Yeah. And then have the Superman follow immediately after that movie. Because remember, James Gunn said in um, his Twitter, not rants, but Twitter discussions, that his Superman movie that he's working is not an origin story. Superman is already active in the universe. Oh. He's already been around for at least like a year or two. So they reset the timeline. Right, so if they reset the timeline, right, in Blue Beetle, then it would yeah. make sense for Blue so, Beetle to be the beginning. So it's like he was already... And then the Superman that they're referencing in Blue Beetle, I would have it be a lead-up to the new Superman movie. Yeah. Because I think it's a mistake to have the new Superman movie that they're making, Man of Tomorrow or whatever it's going to be called, be the, the start of that new universe. Yeah, I think it's better to do it with Blue Beetle because, I mean, I don't know. Because they tried that with Man of Steel and that, you know, didn't quite go the way they wanted to set the tone. I think it just, it just is easier to 
start it with side characters, then you can ease into it. I mean, it's just. I wouldn't say Blue Beetle's a side character. He's a important uh, character in DC Comics, and especially like with um, what they're trying to do with the character and the fact yeah, that there's well, um, references to the the Flash movie was supposed to set the tone. Well, like the Flash movie yeah. was supposed to reset, well, clear the board. We can't do that. No, you can't do that because then you have the Aquaman movie that's just awkwardly hanging around. And also Flash. Well. I personally think it's a horrible idea to keep Ezra Miller on, so I don't see how they're going to keep him as the Flash. Yeah, having Ezra so around is, think, is a I huge problem. I just think it's a horrible idea. Like, I, I think, like, whether or not the Superman... I mean, you already know this movie is going to do well. You already have it, so why not have it restart the universe? I'm, I'm never saying that a DC movie is going to do well, because I don't know. Um, I need to actually see a DC movie perform well. Even the Batman didn't perform I think, anywhere near it should have. I think that this movie will do well because nobody's openly trying to boycott it and hate it. Like, the... Yeah. I think the I think that Black Adam did You're poorly because the Snyder understand. fans boycotted it. Nuts. What else I gotta know? You know, I think the Super Bowl movie would have done poorly because Begin. people would have boycotted it because it was so bad. I think 90% of the movies that they were gonna make made somebody mad and would have had someone boycott it. The Aquaman movies were dying because people were boycotting it because of Amber Heard. Every DC movie is doing badly because people were boycotting it. People were even boycotting uh, some of the, you know, like, um, you know, people didn't like the Justice League because then they found out what happened with. Um, stuff behind the scenes with what's like, Snyder people are or Snyderverse fans are boycotting Blue Beetle. They found out that uh, Ben Affleck had a cameo and then he doesn't anymore. They're very oh, angry. Wow. They've Why been they've they, been angry well, since uh, November. Crazy. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't I say all of them are crazy, but the ones that are boycotting Blue Beetle are psychopaths. Like they're crazy. How would you any project? Let it go. Like, any project over. that was attached by Walter Hamada, they said they would boycott. But, so whether but, it was Batgirl, Blue Beetle, Supergirl, they they were very sense. adamant with that. It's like saying I'm gonna boycott drinking water or breathing air. What are you talking? The only time they were on board with it was when George Lopez said, because George Lopez was the one who, like, let it slip because he thought it was okay to talk about it because um, basically over the summer, you had Jason Momoa telling people last year that Ben Affleck was back as a role of Batman. So George, when they were filming stuff well, and he did one of his first interviews, he was like, yeah, Batman's in our, in our movie. I had a scene with him and stuff. Well, and, well. and people had this eyebrows raised he's like well i can't tell you what batman it is but um, yeah well then not long after that you know mysteriously batman is taken completely out of the movie so yeah which i i feel i really do i feel bad for ben affleck and i know people are making this joke and i'm gonna stop them right there because they're saying that he went from batman to working dunkin donuts it's not what's happening um what? ben affleck and his wife jennifer lopez were given a contract buy Dunkin' Donuts to appear in a series of commercials that will start airing at the end of the year or this summer. And Ben is a huge fan of Dunkin' Donuts. So <laughs> when people were catching him like at a, um, uh, what do they call it? A drive through in Boston where he was giving people their food, they were filming several commercials where he is, he and Jennifer are the brand of Dunkin' Donuts Oh, wow. For their next wave of advertising. It's not like he got fired from playing Batman and he had to go and work Dunkin' Donuts. That's not what's happening. That's false information. That's all lies. He has a contract with Dunkin' Donuts to be their spokesperson for, like, I don't know, a year or something or six months. Yeah, that's not working at Dunkin' Donuts. No, he's not. Well, they were filming. He yeah. was at the drive through and he loves Dunkin' Donuts. That's why he was happy, but... It's a brand, actually, that he's been trying to get since Daredevil. Wow. He has been trying to be in Dunkin' Donuts-related stuff. Why does he want to be in Dunkin' Donuts? It's He he loves it. Most people in the East Coast like, love Dunkin' Donuts. What does he like there? The coffee? The donuts, the, donuts, the coffee. The bagels? Yep. Beetled? The muffins? Get blue beetled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. The tortilla with a little egg and cheese in it? 
Did people say this video is pre-recorded? No, this is happening in real time. We're doing How a discussion. Is this How is like is a podcast. It? We can see you guys. We can see you. If it was pre-recorded, I would have cut some stuff out. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I even, I wanted to correct people on Twitter, like, you know, bashing uh, Ben Affleck, saying, wow, like, he's... people are so rude Yeah, to it's like, obviously, he's not gonna show up working there. Either he's doing something for a charity, which, he has several charities in Boston. That would make sense. Yeah. But no, he's actually doing uh, filming for Dunkin' Donuts. And we'll get to see those advertisements, which are gonna be really funny. And I believe, also, he's directing and producing some of those adverts, too. That's which is, cool. you know, he's adding more to his producer and directing credit. Yeah, he likes directing. He does. Um, he's going to be directing a DC movie. We just don't know what it is. But yeah, if George Lopez didn't talk about Batman being in his movie or a Batman being in his movie, then yeah. probably Ben Affleck's cameo would have stayed in if the movie was in the continuity before The Flash. Yeah. But since it comes out in August after The Flash releases in June, you can just see that the DC universe is so messed up. So. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand why Peter and James just don't have Blue Beetle released later on because it having Aquaman and The Flash come out like after each other, if Aquaman takes place before The Flash, it doesn't make sense for Aquaman to come out afterwards because he's not going to be Aquaman anymore. They're going to have a brand new Aquaman. I think they just want to get one good movie out that... Well, The Flash is going to be phenomenal. Like, a, a controversy aside, everything that I've heard about Keaton's performance, Quasimodo, which is Zod, and, yeah, Quasimodo's back. Um, oh my god. Quasimodo is the villain. How is he back? So they fire Henry Cavill and bring back Quasimodo? Oh my god. They basically reused elements of Man of Steel. What? The, it's a sequel. The movie, I, the movie has so many different, like, no, it works, though know what's happening anymore like every time we have discussion i just i'm just on my job i'll explain it like, i'll explain well, it. i don't know what they're okay. doing so the flash movie is a sequel to 2017 justice league mm -hmm. in a sense it begins that way with barry working with batman and gal gadot two members of the justice league yeah so ben ben and gal and you also have a send-off from jeremy irons was originally in one of the test screenings yeah. There was a, a sweet little Bat Cave Wonder Bat moment uh, again, yeah. with, you know, teasing that thing that'll never happen now. Mm, so oh, yeah, come yeah, on. yeah, teasing more of that. Yeah, that needed to happen because she needed to move on after her other guy. Well, they were gonna died. bring they were gonna bring back uh, Steve again a third time Why? for her third movie. Yeah. Oh my gosh! They need to stop doing that. Yeah. Stop raising Steve Actually, Trevor let's, from the let's dead. Bring, let's bring Wonder Woman into this. <laughs> stop raising Steve from the grave. It's Leave Steve, Steve in the grave. Leave yeah. him rest in peace. What is wrong well, with you? Well, she was people? fired, not Gal, um, but the other lady was fired for writing it because basically they said, What did Wonder you do? Woman. Just rip off Wikipedia? Because oh. the storyline was just so weird. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Finding a way of bringing back Steve Trevor again. And I get it, they like working with Chris Pine, but like, maybe just have like Chris Pine come back as a bad guy that's not related to Steve Trevor, he just looks yeah, like, like Steve clone. Trevor. No, not a clone. No clones of Steve Trevor. Just some villain. Maybe he could be his grandfather. Or, no, I mean, he, his grand no he, he had no kids. He died. Oh, yeah. He died in the war. No, he, Gal was his, uh, Wonder Woman was his girlfriend. Yeah, they could bring him back as a villain, and then she'd be like, you remind me of something. Exactly, and you could do that. You could have Chris Pine come back and play a villain who looks kind of like Steve Trevor, but he's not Steve Trevor, and it messes with Wonder Woman. But no more resurrecting Steve Trevor anymore. He's dead. Stop it. it what they did with Wonder Woman 84 was weird it enough. But anyway... The Flash movie, getting back to that. Uh, so, Wonder Woman, Ben, and The Flash. I think it starts in Star City or maybe in Gotham. I don't remember. Um, they have a cool moment in The Flash. It's not very long. Like, Gal and Ben are in the movie only about, like, ten minutes at the beginning. If that. I think it's, like, eight to ten minutes before Barry ends up running back in time, trying to save his mom, and then screws everything up. Then you have... Michael Keaton's role, which is substantial. Michael Keaton is in the movie for about 55 minutes. So this movie is still gonna happen? Yep, the movie's still happening. He is in Acts 2 through 3. 
He's, he's in, like, the majority of the movie, and the movie almost, in a way, Andy Machete, the guy who's the director and producer of the movie, basically did, like, a continuation of Batman Returns. Like, he did justice to the Michael Keaton character and brought um, fans, you know, into the world of a retired Dark Knight from that era, wow. you know, in the 2020s. Like, it, it's a retired version of the Batman Returns guy, so it's like it picks up right in kind of, like, um, Tim Burt's Tim Burton's universe, in a and sense. Michelle Pfeiffer was in that movie? But, no. Uh, there's an Easter egg to Michelle Pfeiffer because... <laughs> Too bad. You know where they were going to go with that. They were going to bring Michelle Pfeiffer and Keaton back for Batman Beyond. Um, oh, And introduce yeah. a Terry McGinnis to take over for Batman, but not in the future. Like, in the 2020s. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, Keaton got so paranoid in this universe that he defeated Sasha Kaye, Supergirl, when she first arrived. And he imprisoned her. Oh my gosh. Keaton has Supergirl, like, imprisoned wow. by the U.S. government inside of, like, a, a Red Sun prison, like, out of injustice. Before she even gets a chance to do anything. Before she even gets a chance to do anything. He's a very paranoid and, you know, he was around for quite a while. As And, you know, there was no super being on his Earth. Oh, wow. So what happened was, eventually, Zod ends up following... Um, Supergirl to this Earth, where she never got to be a champion of, and uh, reluctantly, uh, behind Keaton's back, the two berries go and they rescue Supergirl, who's still learning her powers, and they end up fighting Zod in like this Groundhog Day event, and a new Justice League is formed. The new Justice League is Keaton, the two berries, and Supergirl, and they basically die over and over again fighting Zod, and a berry always has to run back in time to prevent Batman, Supergirl, and everybody from being, you know, destroyed by Zod. And that's almost the entirety of the movie. It's a very action-packed, very gritty, dark, um, you know, time travel movie. Like, with death at its center. Like, the they're being killed off repeatedly over and over and over and over and over. I forgot to say watch out for spoilers. Uh, Oops. It could still change. Well, that was one version of what was That was one version of the test screening, yeah. For The Flash. But that's why people really liked it, is because it, it stood out. It was different, and Michael Keaton's performance was like Chef's Kiss. Lady, it was, I was, it was such great. a big fan. Was a big fan. Yeah, till you went all regime and stuff. Begin. Yup. No, no hug time. Still, still work time. Um, but, uh, unfortunately, Ben and Gal don't show up in the rest of the movie. And then at the end of the movie, like, they were under... This was all under Walter Hamada, so all those Snyder fans saying that Walter didn't have a plan. Um, I believe that this Andy Machete guy was gonna be Walter's pick to make the next Justice League movie, and then tied into the return of Ben and Henry. Why did Walter Hamada get heated? Walter Hamada was the guy who said that he wanted his new DC Universe to be, like, uh, a DCU. So he wanted Wonder oh. Woman, Batgirl, and Supergirl instead of Batman. I don't know why he said that. He said a lot of stupid stuff, and it cost him his job, basically, because Doesn't... fans just couldn't get on board with the idea. And in his defense, like, you know, his idea for The Flash worked. His idea for Aquaman originally worked. Maybe he didn't mean get rid of all the mail. No, he, he, no. He He, didn't he, he, he fired Henry. He, he got rid of... Because he came in, like, at the end of uh, 2017. Like, uh, and he also was a, a very stark uh, opponent for the Snyderverse. Like, the... Um, you know, and because of the pandemic is the only reason that movie came into fruition. Um, what what was the guy that... Oh, James Wan was the one who did this um, Aquaman. Yeah, but um, J- uh, Walter Hamada was behind the scenes as, like, the executive producer and the, the big, you know, CEO so was, at Warner Brothers. He's what made that Aquaman movie happen. So. Well, he also claims credit for James Wan's, like, one billion dollars uh, for Aquaman because mm. Aquaman was, like, one of the first movies he was a part of, like, as, like, an executive. Yeah. I mean, I just don't get how these executives can make really good movies, really good decisions, and then make horrible decisions right after that. I just don't get it. Like, how could you be smart one minute and then be really dumb the next? Do you, just, you want to know something weird? I just don't understand. I'm going to blow your mind. Do you know what uh, James Wan's next successful movie is currently? 
I don't know. Mission Impossible. I don't know. Megan. Oh, he did, did the Megan. James Wan, the director of Aquaman and Aquaman 2, is oh, the guy who created too, Megan. Wow, that movie is really taking mm -hmm. off. Wow, he is really a good um, movie he, He's a really good visionary person, yeah. Like, he's, uh... That movie, I keep watching clips of that movie online, and it's, like, so creepy. I keep watching it, but I don't think I'm gonna No, I don't, I, don't, I don't like horror movies. It's just not my thing. I believe that's actually Two-Face in there. Yeah. Uh-huh. I like how, I like how, not to get off topic, but I like how in that movie the plot is really interesting, because the doll, or the android girl's, like... She's like, um, you know, if if she's yelling at her mom, or the she's supposed to protect the little girl, she's yelling at her mom like, mm. I don't want to go to school. And then her mom's like, you're going to go to school and you're going to like it. And then the, <laughs> the doll's like, wins. you are hurting, you know, my friend. Like, it's like, oh my gosh. It's like, she can't even, her mom can't even tell her daughter what to do without the doll, like, interfering. It's like, oh my gosh. This is yes, we're playing Hogwarts. Um, Hogwarts is like the biggest game we're covering in February. Mm. I don't I don't even think there's a bigger game in February. Well, now I know why the Wonder Woman lady got uh, fired because Wikipedia. Because she um Your They they accused her of like Wikipedia like storylines and they didn't want to work it with Chris Pine again. Failing. Like because they're again. saying you're just resurrecting Steve Trevor again, you're fired. Yeah, um, like why can't you think of a new plot? Like there's so many plots you Take from you could even just take it from the Justice League, and it's actually kind of her fault, like Patty's fault, because apparently Zaslav was so ticked off that the Wonder Woman movie had to be shelved that he wasn't planning on actually meeting with Henry and Ben until the new year. Like, he had so it was because of her that everyone got fired. Well, when he saw that the Wonder Woman movie could be canceled and it wouldn't really impact uh, James Gunn's like new vision because Wonder Woman was just going to kind of show up in other people's movies as like a supporting character for a while for the first like you know wave because I mean think about it she had a supporting role in uh, Flash and then she has a supporting role in Shazam which now Shazam 2 was going to take place after the Flash it takes place before it now so yeah. that's why Gal is able to show up in that movie yeah and she does. She is in Shazam so, too. What they're saying, I mean, not to be rude, but what they're accusing her of is just going to Wikipedia, looking and seeing, like, oh, I see, Wonder Woman has a rope. Okay, I'll put that in my movie. No, I, I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. Like, like but basically, there are some uh, filmmakers, like the the Batwoman writers, have been accused of basically skimming Wikipedia and like uh, kind of plotting their storylines like that. So they're saying that Patty kind of did the same thing. Because, like, she didn't really have a direction in mind. Like, when when they they were supposed to... Because Gal, like, announced that they're working on the third movie and Patty didn't even have a script in, like, ready. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Gal announced on December 7th, I believe, that she wow. was still playing Wonder Woman. She was so excited to share with people what the uh, third movie was going to be. And then, you know, they met with Patty, like, James Gunn and, and Peter Safran, and she didn't really have a full script she had like an outline and they accused her of that outline of being like very like wikipedia heavy and her outline basically consisted of wonder woman fighting another wonder woman based villain from the comics which is fine yeah um but they were gonna resurrect steve trevor from the dead again and mm. peter and uh you know james were not happy and zazlaf was furious and it was actually Zazlap who canceled the, you know, I wouldn't say indefinitely, but he put it on hold. And then all his meetings that he was supposed to have in the new year with, like, Ben and Henry and Gal, he moved up to, like, that week. So Ben Affleck went up oh, to wow. see. This is this, right yeah. after he was already mad. Like, a week after the incident, like, Ben went up and he spoke with Zazlap, and it didn't work out. And Zazlap just, like... Well supposedly I... the rumor is he called up james and he told james to clear the board like just recast everybody it, if i was writing a wonder woman movie it's hard because wonder woman does work with the justice league so you would need to kind of like a lot of her stories you would find like other villains that the other justice league fought Batman sends a but i think it would be me. really interesting since up. they started wonder woman about the mascara i think do. like going back Begin. to the mascara 
Fighting Ares again. Having Ares show up in the movie again would be interesting. He's a really good villain. He was a really good villain for the first one. I think bringing Ares back would be interesting. But according to rumors, what the plan was... Like, yes, the Justice League, meaning Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman, were going to be at the forefront of this new soft rebooted, rebooted universe. And yeah. but every time um, Zaslav brought up in meetings about Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, he always used clips and pictures of Henry, Ben, and Wonder Woman yeah. because he planned on them, yeah. at least in 2022, being the, you know, the DC Trinity but with a soft reboot. However, outside of Superman, which he said would be the main focus of their new Superman movie, like they were gonna do a Superman movie, yeah. and originally they did have Henry in mind. In fact, this is why I don't believe a lot of those scoopers, because they say that Zaslav was done with Henry. That's not true. He brought Henry back for two cameos in The Flash and Black Adam, and Henry Cavill yeah. made $275,000 a cameo. That Zaslav pulled the string strings, and then had his uh, one of his um, uh, co co chairs or like uh, producers or somebody named Deluca, who got Henry into Black Adam after yeah. all the work that Black Adam did, and then that same week got Henry to film a cameo that was put into the Flash movie yeah. in the last test screening that people saw like in November, I believe it was, mm -hmm. where basically Barry. Um, or rather, Ezra came back and he did some, like, additional photography. Like, you know, they filmed some stuff. Right. And his one line that he says to Henry is, Henry is flying through the Speed Force, and it's at the end of the movie, right. and Barry says, oh, that's where you've been. Oh, in the Speed Force. Because Superman was so powerful, he couldn't have been erased by the Flashpoint. Oh. He was inside of Barry's Speed Force the whole time. So that's how they were going to save um That's Henry how they were going to bring Henry back, yeah. And so then Henry would have worked with the, the new universe to uh, find Ben Affleck eventually. Wow. That, that, was, was... that was the plan. So what was going to be happening is the DC characters, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman, for the next wave of DC films, whatever those were going to be, they were going to appear in supporting roles, kind of like what um, Robert Downey Jr. and Captain America and some other yeah. Marvel heroes popped up in other people's movies to kind of flesh out that universe and show people... This is your Batman, this is your Wonder Woman, this is your Superman, and they're just going to pop up, and then eventually they'll come up in their own, like, Trinity movie, and then they'll... But the movie that was going to be first for, like, all the Trinity was going to be a brand new Superman movie that DeLuca, Zaslav, before James Gunn came in, had already green-lighted, and they were working on finding a director, and the director that they were looking at was the guy behind Mission Impossible that worked with Henry Cavill. Hmm... I think if they were going to make a Wonder Woman movie to go after Steve, because let's just pretend Wonder Woman 1984 never happened. Like, after Steve died, wasn't there a Wonder Woman, like, Justice League episode where Wonder Woman helps, like, save a village or something? Um, where Wonder Woman helps save... Well, she doesn't save it. She gets really angry because, like, the women were killed and then she gets really angry and she, like, loses it. I think you're thinking of um, New Frontier, which takes place in the 1960s. Yeah, I'm thinking of that. Yeah, New Frontier is not what they were going to do. And then she was like, but I, I don't want to do that, but I'm just saying, like, I think it would be interesting Supergirl. if she was kind of like... Uh, you know, like, the Winter Soldier in Marvel where he has gone through a lot so he cave. goes to wakanda and he stays there for a while because he's just kind of like hanging out because he's stressed out i think it would be interesting to see wonder woman like go on I'm like no a hero's journey girls. like go off on <laughs> her own for a while be like oh me. i can't really talk to the justice yep. league for a while be. because Begin. i need some alone time but then she finds like a village that needs her help or something but then well, maybe... Like, no, she taught the women to, to murder all their oppressors. Oh, like, that's, that's what she that's did That's what that. New Frontier is a fantastic oh. film, but it's incredibly dark maybe because it... it was set during, like, the, the Vietnam era. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember that. And, and, and uh, was... Kennedy and stuff like that. I like Wonder Woman. What Wonder Woman is is, like, she's different than the rest of them. Like, you know, like... Be uh, you know, Batman and Superman are always saying what is the right thing to do, and Wonder Woman is more like, because she's a woman, she feels with her heart, like, these people are being oppressed, like, they need to fight back, I, I don't care what the right thing is to do, 
want. They need justice. That's kind of how Wonder Woman thinks. With her heart, like, mm -hmm. I feel for these people. They need justice. Yeah, her sisters. Like, yeah. she views all, of, all every female as, like, part of the sisterhood because so, of Themyscira. It doesn't matter what the right thing is to do. It's what they have been hurt. They mm -hmm. need to get revenge or they need to get justice. So, she's thinking differently than Batman and Superman. Not with logic, but with her heart. So that's what I like about Wonder Woman. She is not. She does not make the same decisions that Superman had. I'm just gonna interrupt you real quick. Uh, the consensus in the chat right now: Why did Zaslav's plans change involving Ben, Henry, and Gal? Money. He was not happy with uh, the return for. They were really banking on Black Adam because. They didn't really have a lot of money to give. They essentially gave Henry like four four hundred thousand in total for two cameos. Two seventy five apiece is wait two seventy five. Isn't that five hundred? Is that five hundred thousand? Two seventy five piece would be five hundred and five hundred and. Uh, we'll say five five uh, five hundred k. Five hundred fifty thousand. Okay, five hundred fifty. So he was he was paid five hundred fifty thousand. Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot. Uh, was given a cameo in an upcoming DC film. Ben Affleck was given two cameos. Uh, he was paid 250000 for Aquaman and Blue Beetle, all of which he got paid, but neither one of his performances are going to show up. Which, yeah. I want to see those deleted scenes, dang it! Um, yeah. What happened was, basically, uh, I've been joking about this for a while, but I told you guys he was a ruthless New York City executive. Like, very, very cutthroat television executive who um, made it to the top of the television industry because of, like, how he is able to maximize his profits and to understand what his audience wants and to, you know, milk that stuff out. He doesn't get... He doesn't get to the top by worrying about people's feelings. No, and also he got Ben Affleck and other people to agree agree to direct and be recast in different roles and all this other stuff, but... Let's make a deal. You and me? Kind of. Um, he was furious with... After speaking with Affleck, this is how the rumor goes, that um, he was not comfortable with the salary that Ben, Henry, and Gal were going to have because of based on, you know what type of actors and actresses they are. Like, you know, um, Ben Affleck is a Emmy Award winning, uh, you know, he literally has Oscars and all this other stuff. Like, he is probably one of the biggest stars that they had in the DC Universe. If not, yeah. probably the biggest in terms of like, you know, um, A actor or triple A actor, whatever they call that. Um, Warner Brothers is hurting right now for a lot. and. Even though people say that Robert Pattinson is, is a, a really big actor, in a sense, he's really not because he wasn't making anywhere near ben, what Ben Affleck made for his appearance in uh, BVS and yeah. his cameos in Suicide Squad right. and uh, his um, role in Justice League and all this other stuff. Um, he's not he's, he's not, actor, he's not an A actor yet. He's growing his credits, right? Ben yeah. Affleck is, is an established actor, so he costs more money. Henry Cavill is really big because of The Witcher and Mission Impossible and some of the other things that he's been doing. So he's really grown from being this nobody when he was hired to do Man of Steel. Right, he's not a nobody anymore. And Gal is also not an unknown. When they were cast, everybody outside of Ben Affleck was essentially an unknown. Right. And what Zaslav wants to do is he wants to put unknowns or lesser known actors in the role of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman and the Justice League for the next wave of DC films so that he can keep costs at a minimum. This is all yeah. about money. So he better make them sign an ironclad uh, contract so they can't do side projects. Otherwise, they will become known. Right. But, yeah. It's not that he, he dislikes them. He doesn't want he doesn't to pay want them. doesn't want to pay money. In fact, there's another interesting rumor that has a lot of weight to it. He can't stand Amber Heard. But he will not pony up the cash to replace her with another actress. Yeah. So he wanted her removed from the movie, but apparently she's intrigued to the plot yeah. at the beginning and the end of the movie, so they can't just get rid of Amber. But he will but not he pay the money pay yeah. to get an actress to replace, replace her and film different stuff. Yeah. He is a Scrooge to the T. There is a story, several stories of him when he was at Discovery. There was a married couple with kids. They just had babies. 
and they had a very successful house building show on Discovery. That was in like peak for the Nelson ratings. He got into an argument with the husband of the wife. He canceled their show before Christmas. Right yeah, after they had kids. Yeah. And their show was one of the top on Discovery. And then he hired like two other actors to have house building shows that weren't as popular, but to fill the same time slots of the canceled yeah. couple. Yep. Yeah. That's the kind of person Zaslav is. It's all about money. Are you doing a Hal Jordan or are you doing Dr. Fate? I could do Hal Jordan. Green Lantern. It's all about money. I really think for a Wonder Woman movie, I would have liked Fighters to see. I think her Joker's helping playground. women who are oppressed somewhere would be great. Like, there are a lot of horrible things that happen to women in Scare different countries. Scare obsessed to kick your ass. I think, that thing's a dangerous weapon. I think Wonder Woman so could have a very Lantern. dark, um, like, deep movie about that. Or she could have... I think it would be interesting if she was trying to rescue women somewhere or just people in a village and she tried really hard and maybe something happened where she was like it was bothering her so much and it was too much for her and it would be great if either batman or superman came alongside her and saw she was in trouble and then she realized that's why she needed the justice league like i think it would be interesting if in her movie she realized she needed friends because mm -hmm. she's the kind of person so powerful she feels like she has to do it all on her own, but I think just like Batman and Superman need friends, Wonder Woman needs them as friends, too. Well, I mean, they basically, the thing that, uh, the only aspect of James Gunn's plan that I'm excited about is that he has said that for his archetype, for the relationships, and for how these characters are going to interact and stuff, he really wants to use as a baseline, um, basically the storytelling from the DC animated universe, so the yeah. Timverse, which is great because that's some of the pinnacle of, you know, well, DC storylines. I think what would have been great, but they can't do it anymore, but a person I could relate to, because Wonder Woman has a lot of pain like she's very empathic she feels people's pain she doesn't feel like people understand you know like people from the top they don't understand she fights for the little person a lot i think a person that could understand her heart and who could understand her would be john jones as the um martian manhunter because he's lost everything as well mm -hmm. she lost steve Trevor, she lost the mascara. She's lost her whole island. Honey, okay. Yeah, I'm listening. Maybe you're like looking at the chat. I, I guess I'll just stand here. No, no, no. Keep going with what you're saying. I'm. Well, I mean, I'll say it later when you have time to hear what I'm saying. I have time. I was just uh, seeing like uh, the chat was just going by really fast, so I was, just, I was distracted by it. Just keep going back to what you were talking about. It the doesn't Justice matter. League. I don't. I was just saying, like, I don't even know if you heard what I said. Yes, I, I heard what you were saying about friendship but, and the Justice League no, and things like that. that's not what I said at all. Yeah. We were we were talking about like the DC animated universe and how it would be like the archetype for no, that's going what forward. We were talking about. Okay. Uh, I just was saying if she was gonna make a friend that could help her out when she needed somebody, like in a movie. Like Wonder Woman? Yeah, I think John Jones would be a great friend because he got introduced in the Snyder Cut and she lost everything with, um, you I'm know, the, Lantern, the but you're not and winning. Steve, and he kind of lost everything with his family as well. What do you mean she, she was, uh,. Uh, excluded, or she was kicked out of Themyscira, but... Well, she still lost them. She couldn't go back and see them. Yeah, that's true. Okay. And she lost Steve, which was her whole life, but she didn't have anyone. So you're saying that, like, two lonely souls become good friends? Like, that kind of... I don't know. I, I was actually... I talked about it for a while. It... Okay. No, I, I could kind of see that working. I was... I... I don't know. What would you... You said the movie was bad, then... Nobody has any other ideas for a movie then for Wonder Woman. So everyone who's every movie idea is bad. I was just trying to say a movie idea. No, I don't I don't think every movie is, is bad that uh Blue Beetle. Okay. So uh I'm trying to Funny, think. your character was standing there for like twenty seconds without moving. That's cause the chat was going by really fast and I have ADD, honey. It's it's one of the last streams of the night, so there was a lot of stuff going on. Like, I'm, I'm literally doing the best I can. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. I was talking about James, 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 James. I'm surprised based on, like, 
what time in January it is that they still haven't announced what the first wave is. It, the longer and longer they they wait to discuss like the next wave of DC like stuff, it's troublesome because I don't think it's going to really succeed all that much because people are kind of banking on what their plan is, and if they're waiting until the Flash and some of this other stuff, uh, the Flash's uh, Super Bowl trailer is next month, I believe, but we were supposed to get a clear indication of what's happening at least like for the first year of their new wave of DC projects, like their new actual DC films, like the Superman movie. And I don't know if they're doing a Batman movie or what a green lantern. They teased, um, not Martian Manhunter, um, Mr. Terrific and some other stuff. You can pick whatever justice league character you want. Dr. Okay. Fate. Dr. Fate again. That's cool. And, uh, you know, I, I just kind of curious to see what they're going to be doing because it's like all the DC news right now has been bad and all people can do is just speculate based on like a few test screenings and, you know, uh, stuff that the actors have talked about, not just Blue Beetle, but like, other DC projects. But it's just like everything that could have been, it's upsetting, um, especially with Blue Beetle in mind because Blue Beetle actually probably would have worked really well in the older universe, especially with uh, the uncle knowing of superheroes' existence and oh stuff like that. Oh my god, I just realized, Luke, mm. Dr. Fate is connected to Blue Beetle in so many universes. Yep. He removes the magic in many universes of the Beetle so that my Jaime can wear it. Yeah, and well... Dr. Fate was in, in this universe as, in, the, in the Black Adam universe. Was... But it would be so cool if he could come back and be in the Blue Beetle universe. Yeah. So Pierce Brosnan in the uh, Blue Beetle universe? Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. It's kind of funny that he was like the biggest breakaway character from that movie, and they just kind of did Dr. Fate so dirty. Like, I, I was pretty devastated. Also, um, Blue Beetle will be interesting because he interacts with magic characters. He was talking to Satana in um, Justice, uh, Young Justice. Mm -hmm. She was talking about the magic oh, that was needed like for his, to keep his beetle from like doing stuff. That's because in the Young Justice universe, her father, Zatara, is the um, the body of uh, Dr. Fate. That's why she has like a connection to Dr. Oh, Fate. Oh, I didn't know that. They're not super close in the comics. Oh, because... I didn't know that in the Young Justice, her dad is Dr. Fate. Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I was like, wait, he knows. I was like, why does Blue Beetle know all the magic? That's because in, in Young Justice, though? Kent ends up dying uh, in uh, the Young Justice universe, and the father of Zatara, or the father of Zatanna, has to end up becoming um, Doctor Fate, and he becomes Doctor Fate pretty early in her career as Zatanna. Yeah, it would be kind of cool if Blue Beetle was in this universe and Ben Affleck was still in Batman. If, like, I don't know, like, say, like, Nightwing moved to Bloodhaven or whatever. That's how the movie was designed, though, is Ben Affleck was going to show up. And then, like, basically, like, his his kids, his Robins are gone. They're doing their own thing, and then he's like, ah, oh, I don't have anyone to really help me with this. And then Blue Beetle's like, hey, Batman, like, oh my gosh, I'm your biggest fan, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> jumping around, like, it's like, kind of like in the, um, uh, Brave and the Bold version where he he's working with Batman that would be so cool yeah it was just gonna be a, a Bruce Wayne cameo like basically Jaime was gonna do something super heroic and at the end of the movie to bookend it and to say that we'll see more Blue Beetle he was gonna be uh, invited into the Justice League that that was basically the extent of Batman's role in the movie so yeah. when George Lopez was saying that Batman was involved in their movie you know there's elements of Gotham City there was um, mentions of Batman but yeah. Batman, in a sense, was never going to show up in the movie. The yeah, character Bruce Wayne, Bruce. played by Ben Affleck, was going to show up. I liked, I liked Ben Affleck playing Bruce, Bruce Wayne. I liked his Bruce, yeah. I thought it was pretty good. In fact, it was more believable Bruce than Michael Keaton or than uh, uh, the other guy from Batman Begins. It's crazy to think that we might actually not be done with Michael Keaton as Batman. Because yeah, I don't know what's happening after the Flash now. 
Um, because Ben Affleck is definitely going to be gone. I always saw, like, Bruce Wayne as, like, Nick Fury of the DC Universe. I thought he was recruiting all these people because he could take his money, you know, he could take his money and go recruit them, basically. Because, uh, I mean, you need a lot of money to go across. Yep. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I cannot protect everyone. You're fine. You don't feel well. I, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. I never, I never said you didn't do anything uh, I was trying to think, what was I going to say? Something about Blue Beetle. Um, yeah, it would have been cool if, if uh, Blue Beetle like fanboys over stuff. That's kind of the version of Blue Beetle that we're accustomed to in media, like whether it's uh, Batman Brave and the Bold, super fan of Dietrich Batter's Batman in that universe, and kind of became like the sidekick character who appeared in the most episodes. And he was actually played by, um, I believe he was played by the Batman Beyond actor, Jaime. Yeah, he was. Uh, Jaime Reyes was played by um, Will... Uh, oh, I can never say his last name. The, the guy from Batman Beyond. Will. Yeah. He played Blue Beetle in Batman Brave and the Bold. And then they got uh, somebody else to play him in Young Justice. Well, I wonder, like, since uh, Black Adam, like, didn't do as well as they thought, will we have the same... Will we have the characters from Black Adam, like, appear in the DC Universe? In the reboot? No. Like Hawkman and that nope. girl with the wind powers? Nope, that's all gone. You were introduced to them, and you'll never see them again for a long time. I um, feel sad about this. The only thing that might happen is... The Rock said that after talking with James Gunn that um, Black Adam will not have a big role to play that... in the first um, the first group of uh, uh, DC Adam. films. So the first wave is what he said. So because he said first wave, maybe Black Adam will show up again as a character like Fighters approaching in their like 10 year roadmap. But whether or not that'll be The Rock playing I, him, I don't think so. I think The Rock was in that Get Smart movie. Yes, he was. Still think I'm he played the villain. Boy? I didn't know you he were was lucky, in that. Child. That's kind of Guess I'm about to be lucky twice. Yeah. Begin. yeah, I don't like Blue Beetle's mask in this, but his suit is awesome. I mean, that's one of the things like people are most... Uh, I mean, not most, but I think that's what stands out to everyone, is his suit actually looks good. <laughs> Whereas... The suit that we saw for Supergirl, no offense, but it just doesn't look good. No, her suit's terrible. It doesn't look good. Um, it doesn't look feminine. Ben Affleck's suit always looked good. Like, all of his suits looked cool. He had a lot of suits. Like, he looked great in BBS. His suit looked cool in, like, every, every version of him. And he filled out his suit. He is, you know, pretty buff, so it looks good. Superman's suit would have been interesting to see Superman with the black Superman suit. Well, we got to see the regeneration suit like once or twice. I mean, Wonder Woman's suit looked fantastic. Her like, costume redesign was perfect because it wasn't quite like how it was in the comic books. They went with like a uh, Amazon interpretation, which like, was cool. They, it's weird because like if every single comic book character followed exactly how they were in the comics, then most likely these characters would never get together because they always like hang out in their own comics. So. Mm -hmm. To make a DC universe in which they interact, they're going to have to compromise some of the characters and make them act in ways they wouldn't normally act. Like, make one of them the Nick Fury character or something. And that was, like, the, um, that was, you know, Ben Affleck was, was basically Nick Fury without the eye <laughs> I've got my eye on you. I mean, that was the plan. They were going to have him. They never really had an idea of... After greenlighting the uh, Matt Reeves movie with Robert Pattinson taking over as uh, Batman for that franchise, yeah. Ben Affleck, to differentiate between the two, he was going to be the DC shared universe Batman that showed up in other people's movies, but he never really would get a movie of his own. Like, yeah. So he would definitely would have that Nick Fury thing where he shows up as a supporting character. Um, Which is unfortunate because yeah. Nick Fury is kind of a behind the shadows person, but Batman does deserve his own movie. Yeah. So movies. According to James Gunn, the new uh, Batman, whoever he is, 
um, whatever age he's going to be, um, is going to have a big role to play in the, the new DC studios, like shared universe, like probably leading to like a tower of Babel incident or something like that. Like mm. there's something, cause if they're going with the, the DC animated universe as an archetype, then, um, there's going to be a lot of Batman not trusting these super powered beings and maybe the, the whole buildup that they could do that would be different is have Batman kind of be in a, like a villain like role, which has never been shown in film like is paranoia leading to him doing something villainous i think that would be more interesting than the whole like going and doing the injustice world where superman um turns evil from like the anti-life equation or whatever uh, that, that, uh i think it would be if i was in charge of dc films i would definitely do a tower of Babel. like i would i would build up to you know have the batman the superman the wonder woman the blue beetle Green Lantern movies, all this other stuff. And then my big, like, uh, bookend movie um, would be, like, Batman's plans are used to almost kill the Justice League. And at the end of the movie, Batman steps down as a member of the Justice League. And then you create all these storylines afterwards, like, for the next wave of DC films, where Batman had a big role to play in the first wave, but he's really not involved with the DC universe as a whole. And it, you know, it centers around, like, Superman and... Wonder Woman and some of these other characters building up the Justice League in ways that Batman couldn't because he's not involved anymore. Mm -hmm. He still supports him financially. Maybe he shows up in cameos or whatever once in a while. But that way you could flesh out the characters without Batman being kind of like the babysitter for all these IPs. That's that's what I would do different um, going forward. But anyway, people, that's going to do it for our little discussion. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Um, Tomorrow definitely will be all day One Piece. So don't worry about that. Um, One Piece will be starting in the morning, 7 a.m., I believe. And then the later episodes will be at 5.30, 8.30, and 10.30. It's going to be One Piece all day tomorrow. So, yeah. But Thanks so much for watching. Yep, the next um, uh, video that will be happening on this channel in a little bit will be the LEGO City finale. So if you guys want to migrate over to that. Feel free to, and uh, thanks so much for hanging out. And I hope you feel better, Ampy. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you thought about uh, or what you're excited about for Blue Beetle in the comments below. See you guys next stream in uh, 20 minutes. God bless. Happy gaming. See ya.